Hello friends. Before I send this off to Little Dot, I just wanted to come here and show you, share a few things, a few little tips, um, answer some questions. I've had so much response from this little quilt for Dot's Little Dolly. Um, the dolly happens to be a Madame Alexander baby Huggums. And it's the same kind that it was my daughter's first doll when she was a baby. It was that brand and hers was soft. And then when Sophia came to us and she needed a first baby doll, that was, I bought her the baby, she named it Baby Lala. Then when Dot came along, our other granddaughter, she had to have one. So she has now named hers Baby Lala because she sees Sophia's Baby Lala. So this is a quilt and it is bound with the same binding that I used on Dorothy's little hexi quilt that I finished and gave to her back, I think in January, was it? I was, was before they moved. So I was trying to really push and get it through. Dorothy will turn three in October. And I, I was on FaceTime with her yesterday and with Oliver and their mommy. And I said, Dorothy, if I finish this, right away, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the mail. And she said, thank you, <laughs> sweetest little voice. So before this heads off to, to her house, I just wanted to share, um, yes, I hand quilt. I don't, none of this is done on the machine. I hand stitch. Somebody said, how do you make your stitches so close? Is there a method that you use? And it's nothing but just doing it over and over. And I believe it's the, it's because of the rocking stitch that I do. I've just gotten into that, what it takes to get just that little bit tucked in and do so. It, it turns out where it's pretty much even going around the hexes. Um, somebody had asked about the binding, about I thought since they, they saw that I had pinched it together in some of my stories where I had um, shown it, you know, the chat. Like this is, this is some of the leftover strip. And what I did, I'll show you real quick. It comes like this, where it's this, this width. And then I took it and I could have done it by iron, but I was too cozy in my chair. <laughs> I just did a thumb press and just went down and thumb pressed it so that it's this width. And then when I went over, somebody said, well, it would seem like it would be easier to stitch all the way through and it's really not because you're doing um, a blind whip stitch along. And I started, I started it on the front and whipped that down. I mitered the corners. That was tricky. You honestly, there's a YouTube, I believe there's a YouTube video for anything you could imagine. And so I had used, I, on um, Dorothy's quilt, on her first one, I had Googled um, and found a YouTube video that, and it was, it was another method. Well, then when I got to doing this one, I thought, well, I could just kind of miter that corner <laughs> and it worked okay. So I just did, I just kind of winged it. Um, and that's what I was trying to show you on my stories. Now I did add a highlight to my, on my Instagram page was a highlight that says bias binding. And you can find the little photos there, little video snippets of my process. And I used straight pins to hold it down. I've seen some quilters use those little clips that you can get. I know Strawberry Thief carries them. I don't even know what they call them. They're just little little clips. I think Clover, Clover might make them. It might be that brand. So that's the binding. I did, I soaked it in a, um, in a lavender wash. It's a, lav a lavender soap and the name has left me right now. But if you ask me, message me, I could send it to you. Um, and it has a lavender fragrance or you can have it without a fragrance. Um, but I used the, the lavender, soaked it really well because I soaked it through once and I could still see some of, I'd been heavy on my glue on um, the papers. When I took the papers out, apparently there was still some of that blue, that blue glue I was finding. So, um, I soaked it again, I put it in and soaked it for quite a while. And then I wrung it out real well and I could tell the blue had dissipated the glue, the blue glue. <laughs> and then um, I let it dry a little bit overnight just on the counter on a, on a cheesecloth. 
And then this morning, I just let it tumble a little bit in the dryer just to fluff it up. And it's so soft and it just makes, it's that good crinkle, but it's a soft crinkle, which I, that's what I love about the hand stitching it. And, and I guess any time, I guess any kind of quilting, some people long arm their quilts and maybe I may be regretting hand stitching when I get to my large scrappy hexy, but I don't know. I love the hand stitching that just, that's a soothing rhythm to me. Um, so it's, it's your preference. And a lot of this is your preference. Just know that there's no hard and fast rules. I don't believe, or I'm just breaking them all right and left. <laughs> But just know, have fun with your projects. Don't, and like I said before, pretend that nobody's going to give you a grade. Nobody's, it's not being judged in a contest. Um, there's no prize or award if you do it perfect. I always like to think of what would they do on Little House on the Prairie? What would they have done back in the, on the prairie in a log cabin? Would they have done it perfect? I don't think so. I think it was out of necessity. Just make something warm. So, and I'm sure there were there were women back then that were taking great pride in their stitches and it was done beautifully, but just keep it all in perspective. And the main thing is to enjoy it. It's supposed to be something that is soothing and relaxing and gives you an outlet. So that's enough on that. The other thing I wanted to mention, some, some y'all have, have been so sweet and so flattering on my stitching and I just think I'm totally not the expert and it has taken lots and lots of practice and I was reminded last night when Sophia brought down the Miss Maggie rabbit and I know there's there's I'm finding out more and more of you out there have made these Alicia Paulson had these softy kits um, and I found when I found her it was back in 2013 when Sophia had come to us and she had these beautiful felt ornament kits and then the softy kits. And so this was Sophia's what I made for her Christmas, the year she turned three. And now see, Dot is turning three. And so I think all that, me talking about her third birthday, and I don't know, it just, all these things and the Liberty of London fabric that I used for this. Sophia came upstairs last night and she, she found her rabbit and brought her downstairs. She said, Grammy, her her dress is coming apart. Can you stitch? I said, hand it to me. I'll stitch up. It was, she's played with it so much. Well, I got to, <laughs> it's embarrassing. I looked at all these stitches and the way I had done it and I've come a long, long way. And it's been thousands and thousands and thousands of stitches and just loving it so much. And, and, um, as people say, oh, I'm so obsessed. They use that word obsessed for everything. I'm obsessed with with this makeup. I'm obsessed with this with these clothes. I'm obsessed with this whatever, these pictures. I'm just gonna tell you, maybe there needs to be another word for what I've found with, with the hexes and with stitching. I don't know. <laughs> it's I'm pretty obsessed with with the hexes especially, but with hand sewing, and I've I've said this all along. I feel more control in control, like I have more control over the stitches if I'm doing it by hand. Sewing, um, it's been so long since I was really using a sewing machine. Um, and the treadle machine, like I, tr I made this, I actually sewed this on that treadle machine and the tension wasn't right. So the stitches are really, really loose and that's probably why they're coming apart um, so easily. But um, I just feel more in control of I can get that just right or that meter and I've slowed down. And another um, thing that people keep saying, you're so patient, you must be so patient. No, I'm really not. I am the most impatient I have right now, itis person you have ever seen. And so if you think it's patience, it's that I want it, I want to see it to the finish. I want, I want to use it. Um, I, I'm just, I just want to see it done. And along the way, with the hexes, I began to enjoy the process so much, but I just love doing it that I just keep doing it. <laughs> so all in that mix of things, that's what it is. Okay, so that's the story on Miss Maggie Rabbit. And it just thrilled me to pieces that Sophia remembered all that play that we did and that she wants Miss Maggie Rabbit to live in really old bear's little corner of the living room in her abode. 
that through. and then she ran up and she got her baby mouse so baby mouse is down there too so um anyway hold on let me just put that away <laughs> so the next thing i wanted to tell you this came in the mail now i've been seeing y'all getting yours and i've been so jealous i've been all the way over here in the states it took a little bit longer but the thing that I think everyone has in common is people are, um, it's beautiful and they can't wait to stitch it, but they're not opening it. They're not getting into it. And I know the hardest part, because I've done it three times today, I slide that pretty, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. How do you, how do you even begin to, like, I could just sit and look at it. I could set it by my chair and look at it because it's beautiful. Not, the hardest part isn't taking this off. And the hardest part isn't opening it. Because look at that little clasp. The hardest part is seeing all the pretty things in there. And then thinking, I don't even know where to begin. So the hardest part is, is, is just starting. So I'm going to tell you how to do that. Because I just did it. <laughs> and I thought, I have to get on here and show you. Because you think, well, I'll wait till I've finished something else. And, and, and I get that because I wanted, I needed, I had a timeline on this. If you don't have a timeline on something, you can hop around. Can I just give you permission? I'll write you a note. You may hop around from one project to the next. So what I did, I got my, this is the top of that little picnic basket that y'all see me talk about from Millstream Home. This is, it's like carrying around a little table. I know they have a little table in there, but this one I love because I can lay it flat on my lap and I can work and while Sophia's in there watching Andy Griffith, I can be doing this. So the first thing you do is you take this thing out, this beautiful, everything she does. And, and she's not, this is not an advertisement for her. She is not paying me. I just love her to pieces. And she loves me and she says the sweetest things. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you how to get into this because it's too beautiful for it to sit in that box. And you can start, you can do stages of it. So my, what I started with today was I just got an overview of what's happening here, okay? What it's gonna take. I looked at all the beautiful little pieces in here. Look at this little piece of the quilt. And look at, she calls these little frapperies. There's, look, there's little buttons and there's lace and the lace and little ribbons and there's a snap in there. There's be like everything's so pretty. Like, how do you open it? Do you what do you look? And then the fabrics. Oh my gosh. So that's the linen. That's okay. So, what you do, what I did, I, I saw this. And now, some of you who have not used, um, you know, the papers that are thicker, this will work for you. If it does, or you think. I got, you, you can bypass this, just set it aside, and you can look in your stash. Do you have papers? If you've got papers, use what you're comfortable with using. Now, this, when I've tried to measure, I thought, oh, these must be, they, did, they were a little, too, little smaller than my three-fourths inch, and then I thought they were half, they're bigger than, excuse me, than the half inch, so I, they're five-eighths inch when you read the directions. Five eighths inch, and I thought, well, that's not too far off. Should I go, should I go tiny? Or should I go a little bit bigger? And I chose this because I want to, there's, these fabrics are gorgeous. The, the French general fabrics are gorgeous. This size gave me a little bit more area to showcase some of the patterns. So like if there were roses, I could do, I could fit a whole rose on there. Um, so I, first thing I did was I took out a, like six papers and I just went through each of the fabrics and I just glued down six papers and I put them over, you know, the pretty, like a design or part of the rose or part of the ivy or whatever. Look at these fabrics. Okay, so I did that. I just went through and I just did, I didn't even, I didn't count. I just like six on each one. That just gets me started. And then I took my, I love these Karen K. Buckley scissors. They just, they grip just enough and hang on to it. So I went and I just cut around 
pieces. Then I've saved my scraps. I'll probably go in that cute little box. That's where I may keep all my scraps of those um, French general fabrics. Then the next thing I did was I, and I'm glue based, I'm glue. I'm, that's the other thing. If you don't know how to baste with needle and thread, this is a guideline. This is not carved in stone. This is a suggestion. And it's if you've never done it at all, and they're gonna show you, Nikki's gonna do a whole video on how to do it. I'm just showing, I'm just giving you another way, what I found so that you're not so afraid to dive in or you think, oh, but I'm used to using a glue stick. You can. So you can use your glue stick. Glue, I just glued uh, my little hexes on there. And then I cut out, I just snipped around. So it's, you have about a fourth inch seam. And then I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna glue. I'm gonna glue and I'm gonna glue. Now, isn't that fun? And do you have to do the whole thing at once? No, but you've get made a start. And that's the biggest thing is, is the beginning. I don't know why the beginning is so hard, but in a lot of things it is. In the beginning, what I want to make a quilt, but I don't even know where to begin. I, I want to make a doll, but I don't even know where to begin. Or, and I know, and just let me do a little plug for Alicia has the kit of these on her website. I believe she still does. I know she doesn't have the kits, but she has the pattern. Did I say kit? She has the pattern on her website. So you can get the pattern and, and the materials, um, the felt and things. You can, I think she might have a list of the sources. I'm not sure. But, um, but I didn't know, I'd never made one of these before. But I just, but I wanted Sophia to have one. So find what is your motivation and what are you doing it for? And is there a timeline? And if there's not, just go for it and start easy and get through the first step and then look ahead what's coming next and, and don't stress over it so much. I hope this helps you because y'all, I'm just a learning as I go kind of gal and, and however I can help and y'all send questions and, and I know you say, oh, I know you don't have time and, and I might not answer it until I do have time. It might be that evening or it might be the next day. But I'll, 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 I'll want to be able to help someone because let me tell you how many women helped me and answered my questions. And sometimes I was afraid to ask and I Googled and Googled and Googled and maybe I learned better because I had to Google so much. I don't know. But if you have a source, if you have somebody that you can sit down with or, or you want to send me a question, it may seem, you may think this is the silliest thing and it's not. So that's all I wanted to share with you. I know I've gone way over, so this will not fit on an IGTV. But I just, uh, Nikki and Sue, Sue, you're just brilliant to come up with this. And the minute I saw this that you posted and then Nikki posted it and y'all were collaborating on this, I could not wait till you had it available. So I just, I can't let it set aside. I know I, I want to use it. I want to have the threads in it because there are kits downstairs in my basket of all of Nikki's stitchery projects that I want to have all my things in one place and a place for my threads. I can't wait to make the little Suffolk puffs. Look how cute. Oh, just everything about it. So, okay, go. We're still waiting to hear back on Sophia's test. <gasps> Y'all, so she had to be quarantined until we knew she was, we were still waiting. So if she's negative, she can go back to school if she's feeling better. She's kept a low grade fever in her ear. We're, we're thinking that maybe the source of all of the fever was maybe an ear infection that they thought was just swimmer's ear. I don't know, it's just everybody's trying, is being so cautious. And so I've been home from school and we're just paddling through it. So I hope you all there are staying safe and well and oh, there's so much suffering there's so much goodness gracious it seems like something all the time so this is where i go that and i even made the comment or i had, had a little rhyme that came through my head the other day on one of my posts about that the worries of the world just just go away for a little while when i pick up my needle and thread and it helps me find some peace and calm now at 3.30 in the morning, I'm awake with anxiety. <laughs> and it just, it's just all purpose anxiety because there's so much. But if I find something that I can put my hands to, 
while we're waiting, while we're getting through it, while we're stitch and pray, I, whatever is your method. If this helps you, then I'm thankful. Go have a great or bearable or fun or peaceful or comforting day and pull out those projects that you've been putting off and get to it and take care till next time.